bloodshed, turmoil, financial collapse. These words describe the uranium market and the entire financial market complex. This week, uranium was a casualty of bloodbath. Let's go beneath the surface of the financial system, of the markets. What is going on? How is uranium being impacted by this? And what is in store for the future? So first, let's start with the price action on the week. The URNMs brought uranium miners ETF down 3% of the week. Let's look at the NASDAQ, down 2%. So everything falling together. I obviously don't mind seeing some short-term underperformance. The more volatile an asset is on the downside, the more volatility there is on the upside. And so do not mind that at all. But if you do look back over the year, the Sprott Uranium Miners ETF was up. While that might not seem like a lot, compare that to the NASDAQ, which over the last year was down. And I would much rather be a uranium investor in this environment. It is a much better store of value in these highly inflationary times when you do have a bond bubble collapse. Check out this chart. This is what's driving everything, guys. Bonds cannot crash. US corporate bonds, total return, meltdown, similar to the March 20 crash. This is when things break. This is when the financial system comes apart. This cannot last. There is probably more downside in financial markets, in stock markets, and yes, in uranium stocks. Now, whatever the government does to step in and try to fix this and solve this mess will be bullish for commodities and most likely stocks overall. But it does seem like eventually we will get a divergence of commodities in the rest of the stock market in this type of stagflationary environment. And so historically, that's always been the case. Again, if you look at my prior videos, it's very similar to then. I can see the stock market just whipsaw back and forth, just like it did back then. Here's a chart of the stock market now. Here's a chart of what it was back in the 1970s when you did have an interest rate melt up, which is what we're seeing now. Bonds crashing, very similar times. And so let's dive into the bullish fundamentals for commodities, including uranium, the commodity with probably the best fundamentals. Let's dive into the background, what is going on so we can understand how it's going to do in this very turbulent, very exciting time. So first up, guys, first news, we're going to walk through Department of Energy working on its uranium strategy. The U.S. Department of Energy is working on a broad uranium strategy to ensure a steady supply of uranium to meet national requirements. The ongoing crisis in Ukraine is severe, Manchin said, adding that Russian president had used energy as a weapon to leverage power over European democracy and intends to do the same globally using Russia's abundant energy resources. To counter this, the USA has already taken steps, including banning the import of Russian oil petroleum products liquid natural gas, and coal, while also authorizing additional LNG export capacity. These are critical moves to stop funding Putin's brutal war on the Ukrainian people. Senator John Barrasso, the committee's most senior Republican member, asked Granholm if the President Biden would ban imports of Russian uranium. Huge question. If they do anything like this, uranium is going to skyrocket, right? We know that. I'll let the President make that statement, but I can say that this is a point on which I think we have a lot of agreement. We should not be sending any money to Russia for any American energy or for any other reason. So they want to get away from uranium. Maybe the patriotism here will cause these people to ban Russian uranium and cause it to absolutely melt up. Because again, the US gets 20% of its uranium from Russia. This is all changing. The supply chain is shifting West. We're going to spend more money on more expensive uranium. That's good for the spot price to go up. It's also good for the stocks that people are investing in, which mine this stuff. More capital is flooding into them. We want to make sure, for example, that we are able to supply high assay, low enriched uranium, as well as low enriched uranium to our civil, civilian nuclear fleet. We move away from Russia. We want to make sure we have the ability to continue to keep the nuclear fleet afloat. She also confirmed to the committee that the Department of Energy would make purchases for the strategic uranium reserve for which Congress allocated $75 million. So they're building a strategic uranium reserve, and they're going to take that supply off the market. We already know above ground uranium is in scarce supply. And so these fundamentals, these dynamics are all working together in a bullish setup. The USA currently imports most of the uranium used to power its nuclear reactors. According to data from the US Energy Information Administration, 47% of the uranium purchased in 2020 by owners and operators of the USA civilian nuclear power reactors originated from Kazakhstan, Russia, and Uzbekistan. Uranium of Canadian and Australian origins together accounted for 34%. So you can be guaranteed that, that the amount coming from Canada will go up. 
and from the rest will go down. And so we got to stay on top of that geopolitical setup. We have this from John Quakes. Putin has signed a decree today whereby Russia will forbid the export of products and raw materials to people and entities that it has sanctioned ahead of a sixth round of EU sanctions against Russia expected this week. Uranium, nuclear. So this conflict is escalating and there's a, going to be a war for resources and the tensions are going nowhere but up. And so obviously, as countries try to scramble for resources, they're going to become more and more scarce, more and more valuable. The world is polarizing. You have the East with Russia and China. You have the West. Seems likely that Kazakhstan's probably going to try to stay neutral, but most likely move towards the East. And so we have a lot of work to do, the United States, clearly, in order to invest and build out a uranium mining infrastructure as the spot price climbs. So let's keep moving, going around the world to Japan. Prime Minister Kishida's remark in London yesterday that Japan will aim to restart more nuclear reactors to help other countries reduce dependence on Russian gas. Reactor restarts could displace much of Japan's power sector gas needs and help cut emissions long term. Look at how massive this is. So we have. Out of the nuclear capacity in Japan, we have the red showing the operating amount, but look at all that idle demand just coming back online. That is just an immediate boost to demand for uranium, for above ground uranium, which you've already talked about. We'll go into further how there is a supply crunch and a supply deficit. But just imagine when they bring all that idle capacity online, it's going to be a shot in the arm for the above ground uranium. Countries are already trying to hoard it all over the world. And so this is just going to be a boost on the demand side. Speaking of a boost on the demand side, we have this from the prime minister of the UK, Boris Johnson. Nuclear power stations like the one I visited in Hartlepool today are absolutely crucial to weaning us off fossil fuels, including Russian oil and gas. Instead of a new one every decade, we're going to build one every year, powering homes with clean, safe, and reliable energy. One nuclear power plant every year. What does that say for demand? Obviously, it's skyrocketing. The world is going to run on nuclear and uranium. And these guys are accelerating the demand curve of uranium. And what a lot of these countries are going to be using are small modular reactor technology. We've talked about this at length. There's new technology in the nuclear power industry. And so one of the companies pioneering small modular reactor technology is New Scale Power Core, guys. They just launched their stock into this crazy environment. Over the last week, the stock of New Scale Power Core is up 5.84%. As small modular reactor technology gets adopted exponentially around the world, which again, go back to prior videos, guys. It's full of news stories about how small modular reactors will power everything. As that happens, new scale power core will become an absolutely massive player in the space, which is why over the last five days, you saw the bloodbath and uranium stocks, new scale power core was up 6%. That says a lot. And the market cap is only $305 million, which means it's an easy 10X to $3 billion as this bullish story and the adoption of small modular reactor technology takes hold. This is one of those long-term assets that could turn into a life changer, 10X multi-bagger if you stay with it. Obviously not financial advice. Obviously you want to diversify, but this thing looks set to rip. I love seeing a small market cap because there is so much upside. It takes less money to get an explosive move. So we'll stay on top of that one. Absolutely. Going back to the supply demand dynamics of what's going on above ground, because obviously this is the big story for uranium investors. This came out of the Camco slide deck. Terry Papino and I covered the Camco Q1 earnings presentation. This is one of the slides. Just goes to show, guys, this is the most well-informed company, finger on the pulse in the entire world in the uranium space. This is what they are saying. Uranium fundamentals, best ever. So in the history of uranium, they think this is the best ever set up for bullish uranium fundamentals. So these are the demand drivers. Decarbonization, electrification, obviously we know uranium beats renewables. People will turn to that. Energy security, we know globally the West and other regions and every other region around the world is trying to shore up their uranium supply because they realize how crucial this fuel is. ESG, focus creating electron accountability. People want to go green, huge. 
Let's go for uranium, right? Nuclear power was classified as a green energy. Traditional demand improving near mid long term, obviously just demand for energy growth is organically occurring. And then you have non-traditional demand, SMRs and advanced nuclear reactors. We talked about SMR. That's the demand side, a clear bullish setup, right? Obviously for this. The demand from financial investors driven by intrinsic value of clean energy uranium. So that's where you have Wall Street stepping in, these ETFs gobbling it up, Sprott, Physical Uranium Trust, Yellow Cake, because Adam Prom, everyone's trying to gobble this stuff up and hoard it as much as possible. But now let's go over to the supply. So you have durable demand and uncertain supply. Low prices historically, the last decade or so, have caused supply curtailment. Camco, one of the most knowledgeable, informed companies and entities in this space, is saying that there is a supply curtailment, meaning we've underinvested. There's not enough supply. End of reserve life, meaning a lot of these utilities are using up their reserves. They need to stockpile more. Lack of investment in supply. Yes, the price has been low. Underinvestment, supply is constrained. On top of that, you have COVID and global supply chain challenges, right? Obviously causing inflation along every aspect of the supply chain. Same with geopolitical and trade policy issues. We talked about Russia. So this is just summarizing what is going on. Development risk. How do we get this stuff out of the ground? We have unproven assets, cost inflation, scheduled delays from COVID, global supply chains, increasing regulatory and ESG scrutiny, inflation. So what a setup guys and so we'll close on what the ceo of sprott had to say uranium price has a lot more runway left and needs to double for supply to meet demand there's a reason sprott is doubling down on their investment gobbling up assets in the uranium space they've done the research there is a serious supply and demand imbalance in the market that can only be fixed with higher prices CEO said prices have the potential to double from current prices to $100 a pound. And so we'll stay on top of this market. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Please consult a certified financial planner when making any decisions about investing. And do your own research before making any decisions. Investments are risky and you can lose lots of money in them.